can start. Good afternoon to one and all. On behalf of Chennai Institute of Technology, I extend a warm welcome to everyone to today's webinar session on introduction to machine language and data science. I'm happy to introduce myself, Varsha, from the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Data Science first year and Vice President of Data Science Club in Chennai Institute of Technology. I'm also glad that I chose data science as my core subject as data science is a highly advanced and exclusive field of study which has a wide scope. Data science is referred to the process of collecting, storing, segregating, and analyzing data, which serves as a valuable resource for organization to carry out data-driven decision-making. The main objective of this webinar is to reach the basic idea of data science by organizing various programs to bring together interested students to focus on latest techniques and methods and participate in upcoming hackathons. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. Janartanan, sir, Professor, Computer Science Department, to kindly render the welcome address. Thank you, Varsha. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, I think uh, Chennai Institute of Technology, we have taken a lot of initiative. So this is the very uh, great occasion. We are uh, taking the initiative to start the data science club in our college. So I uh, extend, uh, extend my warm welcome to our chairman, uh, Mr. P. Sriram. Uh, he is a industrialist and he is taking a lot of initiative uh, to organize such uh, uh, event in our college campus. And also I welcome our uh, principal. He is on, on a personal meeting. That's why he is unable to join today. Uh, Dr. A. Ramesh, and uh, also I uh, take this opportunity to uh, welcome our uh, uh, industry head, Dr. R. Balamurli. He has taken a lot of initiative to uh, bring this uh, data science club in our college. I uh, really, uh, we are uh, uh, very much thankful for uh, to take the initiative already uh, was, uh, said. Club is going to be provide lot of initiative to the uh, all the students not only for uh, computer science or a initiative to all the disciplines even mechanical uh, mechatronics civil uh, electrical and electronics Sorry, uh, it's going to be connected. So uh, uh, we are uh, this club is going to be provide you for to participate uh, events like uh, they want to organize many webinars and many uh, online lectures uh, to be provided by the uh, our uh, initiative. Then they want to organize some kind of uh, uh, assessments and they have some hackathons. This will go be provide go be support for each and every one to come up with your life. So this is going to be a good initiative. So I uh, today, Mr. Uh, uh, Agamat K, Vice President and Business uh, from uh, Matriculate Lanme. So uh, taken the initiative for this uh, data science club in uh, along with our CAT. So we have found the MOU last week. And uh, based on that the MOU, now they are taking the first uh, lecture on uh, machine learning and deep learning. So how we would use machine learning and deep learning. So this is the starting beginning. So I request everyone is going to uh, 
contribute that is your side to attend that is all the guest lectures and uh, all the uh, programs organized by uh, Madhukles. Then only so we can go to learn. Uh, we can go to get a sort of knowledge from this uh, outside. So not only that is uh, theory, you know, already we have taken that initiative for self learning. And you go to the disk going for the disk or other uh, kind of the disk or learning is going to be very much useful for each and every one. So I uh, thank uh, once again, I welcome you to this uh, meeting for the, we go to the inauguration of the disk our data science club and we are taking the initiative for this first seminar. I welcome you all for this seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you sir. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. B. Sundaram Balmam, Professor, Computer Science Department, to kindly introduce our esteemed chief guest. Yeah, thank you, Usha. Thank you, ma'am. So, very good afternoon, one and all. Uh, I express my sincere thanks to Imartikas for associating with us to organize this club. Uh, so, it's my pleasure to introduce our today's chief guest, Mr. Ahmed Kali. Uh, he is an IAM Bangalore alumnus with over 12 years of experience in training, sales, marketing, and business development across different domains. Currently, he is the Vice President of Imartikas Learning. Being an automobile engineer from MIT, he started his career with Bajaj Auto Limited, and he started his entrepreneurial journey by setting up his own training firm, which was then acquired by a renowned company. He was then the country head for sales with talent spirit and helped them expand their market at 10 different states. Uh, we are very pleased to have you here today, sir. Over to you, Varsha. Thank you, ma'am. It is an honor and a privilege, sir, to have you with us today. You may kindly take over the session. Thank you. Thank you, Varsha. Thank you, sir. All right, so I believe you guys are able to see my screen. So uh, very good. Good afternoon, one and all. Uh, I'd like to thank the management of uh, CIT, uh, the uh, department, as well as uh, HODs and uh, uh, principal, and all the faculty members uh, for uh, partnering with the Marticus for this data science club, and also uh, uh, welcoming us to give this uh, short uh, seminar as well. I also would like to thank all the participants who have taken your time out. Uh, uh, hopefully, you should have had a nice nap now. Uh, so you would have taken a time out and for joining this session. And I hope that all of you are safe and secure as well. So uh, before I step into the topic today, to talk about a few words about uh, Thematicus, and I will also quickly uh, talk about the Data Science Club, and, and uh, then we will proceed to the topic. I'll keep the uh, discussion short and, and uh, uh, hopefully by uh, 45 minutes, I'll try to complete the discussion. But uh, uh, anyway, you will be having a very long uh, journey with the Marticus and the Data Science Club, and you will be participating in many more uh, webinars similar to this and on these topics. Uh, so let me skip the introduction. Uh, so talking about Imarticus, uh, we started in the year 2012, headquartered in Mumbai. And uh, we are very, very focused on two major domains uh, when it comes to uh, industry segment. One is on the financial services and the other is on the data science domain. So when we talk about data science, it comprises all the parts of data science, including analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, and the technologies associated with that. Uh, from 2012, we expanded to Bangalore and Chennai in the year 2013. And uh, currently, we are present in about 14 different locations across the country. So right from uh, Chandigarh and Lucknow in the north to Coimbatore in the south, uh, we are present in almost all the major uh, cities across the country. We also have very strong presence internationally as well. We are there in uh, Africa. We are there in uh, Middle East, we're headquartered in Dubai. We are also there in uh, Philippines. And recently, we also launched our first office in UK as well. That's our first European office, uh, which was recently set up in London as well. So we have a very strong presence on the international circuit. 
And to put our journey of last eight years in some numbers, we have trained over 35,000 odd candidates. Uh, 80 percentage of them are working professionals, right from two years to 20 years experience in the industry. Over 200 plus trainers are uh, associated with Imarticus. Again, now uh, uh, most of them are having around 10 to 15 years of experience in the industry in different domains. Uh, outside of that, we also have 500 plus training, uh, sorry, global partner firms who have both uh, help us in creating the curriculum, content, projects, case studies, etc. for all of our programs, courses. And also, uh, they also hire the candidates uh, who are, in fact, uh, completing their programs with Imarticus as well. So Imarticus is very, very renowned for the uh, placements that we provide to the industry. So we are regular supplier, right from some of the top names of the industries, including uh, uh, Goldman Sachs to HSBC to uh, world world names like Walmarts and Tesco's, etc. EY, they all regularly hire from Imarticus on a monthly basis. So that's one of the key uh, strength that Imarticus has in this domain. Uh, so, uh, to, before I step into the actual topics, to give a small perspective about the Data Science Club, we have launched this initiative in which over, uh, as of now, as we speak, around 40 plus colleges uh, are partnered with, which is called Data Science Club. And these 40 colleges are across the country, spread across the country. And what we do through Data Science Club is basically we wanted to uh, transfer the knowledge of data science uh, from the industry to the academic uh, domain as well. And we wanted to act as a bridge between these two domains, basically from the uh, industry to the academics, right? So uh, as you all know that data science is one of the fastest growing industry. And every week there is something new that's coming up in the industry. And it's uh, the uh, students as well as the faculty community is really struggling to cope up with the changes that's been happening in the uh, industry side from the data science. So through this club, we thought that we will be able to bridge the gap and we will be able to do a lot more to the community, student community by uh, conducting a lot of webinars, uh, guest speaker, guest lectures from industry speakers. And uh, you will be uh, participating in some hackathons, which are national level hackathons. There will be workshops, short uh, two, three days of uh, workshops, wherein at the end of the workshops, you will have assessments and followed by which you will be getting up certificates, etc. Uh, so all these things again comes at uh, completely no cost to you, uh, to all, all the students uh, who are part of the data science club. And you will be able to regularly access and uh, also uh, we have some 12 mentors who are associated with the data science club as well, whom you can access for any support regarding industry, regarding your projects or anything like that, right? So there's a lot of benefits, features. We will be giving a, a very detailed thing. Uh, officially, we are launching the uh, Data Science Club across the country for 2020 on 16th of November. That is coming Monday post Diwali uh, from morning 10.30 to uh, 12. And we have uh, Gaurav Sundaraman, who's the chief uh, uh, data analyst with Crick Info, ESPN Crick Info. Most of you might have, might be aware about the website ESPN Crick Info. So he's a chief data analyst over there. So he's going to give a very interesting lecture about uh, data analytics in sports, uh, particularly in cricket. And I, I hope that will be a big, big insight because uh, to talk about Gaurav, he was uh, with our CB team for 2015 IPL auction. And uh, second, he was also the uh, data analytics consultant for the champions West Indies team in 2016 World Cup T20 winners, right? So a uh, lot of experiences from him, a lot of insights that's going to come. So I uh, urge every one of you to actively participate in that session as well. You will be getting a lot of insights about data analytics in cricket. And you can also post your queries on uh, all your queries as well to him, right? Okay, so uh, before I move into a uh, topic, uh, I thought, okay, instead of uh, taking directly, jumping directly into uh, machine learning, I will also quickly walk you through what is data analytics as well, right? So why is data analytics uh, uh, important? And I could see uh, there is a data science UG program and uh, uh, started in your college. Uh, it's interesting, there's about 100 plus colleges, universities which started data science uh, uh, from this year onwards, so just from 2020, and I, I also believe that CIT is one such institutions as well. Uh, so why everybody is talking about data analytics and data science now, but nobody was talking about it three, four years back, right? So if you look into that perspective, 
Uh, the very interesting question comes up, right? A, a lot of people ask to me that, right? Data science, data analytics, AI, machine learning, uh, the, all these talks are happening so much now, uh, maybe in last one year or two years, but uh, why is it not happening before? So the reason is basically that industry is completely moving towards uh, a, a data-driven decision-making approach, right? Earlier, it used to be a lot of about opinion-based decision-making, and now we are completely moving towards data-driven decision-making. So for data-driven decision-making, definitely there is a need for us to get the uh, data and to work on the data, right? So what are the process that is involved? So what is data analytics, right? So to put it in a very, very layman's perspective, layman's term, I don't even want to go to the technical jargons about it. Just in terms of a layman's term, data analytics is nothing but analyzing a given data set for a problem statement, right? So what you do is basically you analyze a data set for a given problem statement. So I'll quickly walk you through a case study. You will be able to get some insights about it. Um, but before that, what are the process that is involved in data analytics as such, right? So there are four major process that is involved in data analytics. The very first process is what we call it as data collection, right? So if you wanted to do any analysis about data, the first step is that you need data, right? So that is what we call it as data collection. So Maybe you are not directly involved in collecting the data, but at the end of the day, somebody has to collect it, right? Or, right, some system has to collect it, right? So, data collection is very, very important when it comes to analytics. Whenever I talk about data, uh, most of the times you think about uh, uh, data as text or numbers, right? Uh, uh, mostly it's not about text or numbers, right? It could also be Data can be of any format. It can be audio, it can be images, it can be videos, it can be anything, right? So don't always uh, have a mindset that whenever we talk about data, it is only about uh, uh, text and numbers, right? Data can be of any format, audios or videos or images or anything, right? And next is that, Just a second. Uh, the next process that is involved in uh, uh, data analytics is basically our uh, uh, data formatting process, right? So whenever we talk about data analytics as such, uh, you it is not just uh, data you are collecting will be in a very, very raw format, right? So the next step is that we need to convert this data into a structured format that's what we call it as an unstructured data right so we need to convert this data into a structured format and that process is what we call it as a uh, data formatting process as there are multiple names to it we have data pre-processing data planning data uh, wrangling or data uh, whatever we call it right at the end of the day what do we say what do we do basically is that we are converting an unstructured data to a structured format Right. So once you do this, you got a nice clean data set on your hands. Right. So this is what we call it as a data set. Now, what do we do? Right. The next, the purpose, the goal for us is to do analysis. Right. So look at it. So what do we do at data analytics as such? Right. So basically, uh, if we have to analyze a data, you need a question. See, for example, let me put it in this way. Right. I'm going to give you all the data of uh, entire Anna University students, right? All the semester, all the mark sheets of all the students of across Tamil Nadu, all, all colleges of Anna University, right? Now, uh, and if I'm going to give you the data, it's going to be a huge data because um, there could be around 400 or 500 colleges affiliated to Anna University and there might be close to three to four lakh students data that must be there. So it's going to be a huge set of data. And if I'm going to ask you that, you know, do some analysis, right? So what will you do? What is the analysis you will be doing, right? So basically, that's the question that you will ask, right? So uh, of course, the data is there, but what is the analysis I need to do? So that particular process is what we call, right? You know, you need a problem statement, right? So there needs to be a problem statement. So you talk about business, right? When I'm going to give you a data set, the problem statement can be anything. It can be like why the business is running in loss. Uh, what do we do to make it profitable or anything it could be right what should be the new product which i should launch which market should i launch what should be the price of the product so i can ask thousand uh, problem statements from one single data set right so 
that should that is what we call it as a problem statement right now if i'm asking you with anna university data i can ask you that okay which is the can you rank the top 10 colleges right so that is a problem statement now so you are going to work on the data and you will be finding solution to the problem right so always remember that data analytics is very very simple data analytics is nothing but analyzing a data set for a problem statement right so this is exactly what we call it as data analytics and uh, the final process in this is what we call it as data visualization right now once you do the all the analysis you need to present this data uh, to somebody right it could be to some stakeholder what we call right it could be a customer it could be a client it could be your business manager it could be you could just be publishing it in a blog or you might have to present it to someone anything right what will you do is you need to go for a proper visualization which means that you make it into nice charts or graphs etc that process is what we call it as a data visualization process right so this these are the four major process that is involved when in the data analytics as such clear so before i step into ai and ml etc i'll give you a quick uh, case study update see one thing you should remember that why there is also a huge opportunity from the industry front is because every single industry today right you talk about any industry below the sky they need data analyst on their road right you talk about any any industry right it could be aviation astrophysics to banking to capital markets to uh, automobile whatever it is right any domain they need data analysts because there is data and somebody has to analyze the data for the problem statements right so they need data analysts so there's a huge demand so let me talk about one such industry and i'll give you a case study right let's talk about this right uh, analytics in healthcare so today we are in a pandemic situation that is covid 19 and uh, there's a good amount of reason why uh, we are taking this in a webinar format right uh, because you guys are still at home uh, i'm not sure when you guys are going to come back to college but there's a lot of restrictions that has happened and now the question is that okay what is the role of a data analyst in covid 19 situation right that's that's a case study right so think about it so what do we do what are we going to do we are going to do data analytics in using for covid data right so what i have done is i've collected the data because the first process right the very first step is nothing but collecting the data set which i have told you right i'm sorry if there is a background noise there's some construction work going on all right okay so the very first data if you look at it the first case of covid was on 30th uh, january right uh, from 20 year old female from trishur kerala and as of yesterday close to there were about uh, 90 lakhs of cases uh, in the country right i have all the data set this is an open source data anybody can access it it is on the internet right and if you look at it there's a huge amount of data 90 lakhs of data right 9 million in short so now uh, what do i do i got the data i collected the data and as i told you this is a raw data unstructured data right you can easily look at it look at the uh, gender analysis now if i have to do a covid gender analysis with this data in india right I, there's a huge ja challenge is there right why because there's a lot of data is missing over here there is some data missing over here etc right so how do i analyze it if you look at the age factor the age is uh, something is wrong right not all it is not possible for all the people to be at a 55 years old exactly so these are the challenges when you get when you are working with the raw data or an unstructured data so this is why we go to the next step which is what we call it as a data formatting right so we do data formatting see I, again i'm not going to explain to you how it is done etc of course you will be doing a lot of uh, webinars and sessions and you will be attending workshops etc going forward and you'll be learning that but by now just understand what is the role of a data analyst in the industry right that's the purpose for us and if we have to do some analysis i have already told you right what do we need we need a, a good problem statement so what is a problem statement predict the case for future now why do we need to predict the case for future right you look at it right every single answer that the government needs all the question all the answers comes from this one question right 
how many testing kits do I need? How many hospital beds are required? How many hospitals are required? How many doctors are required? How, whatever it is, right? Do we have to extend the lockdown or not? Any question and every question that government needs answer comes from one single problem statement. What is going to be the cases in future? So this is a very, very important question, problem statement. There is a data set. Now, who will do the analysis, right? It is the doctors are not going to do the analysis, right? Your bureaucrats, officials, they are not going to do the analysis. So who's going to do the analysis is basically the data analyst comes into the picture. That is why data analysis is important, right? So just look at the output. Again, I'm not going to get into the model. I'm not going to talk about statistical model that we applied, etc. But to be very clear, right, this, this analysis was done about a week back when we were having 83 lakhs cases and we were doubling at. So we took doubling rate as an example, right? So what, what is doubling rate means? We are doubling every 58 days, right? So let's take that today, uh, assuming that this analysis is done today, right? We are on the 11th of November. Uh, so if we talk about it, the cases are 83 lakhs cases, right? That's what we're talking about. So if it is 58 days in next two months, right? So by 10th of Jan, let's talk about it, right? So by 10th of Jan, the number is going to be double. So which means that we are going to be at 1.66 crore cases by 10th of Jan. My handwriting is bad, I know, right? Just bear with me. Okay, so in less than two months, uh, the cases are about doubling right 83 lakhs is becoming 1.66 crore that's a huge number remember this right because we got to the cases around in 10 months time right but in next two months it's going to double right so that's a huge uh, growth rate what we are at now so this data will be passed on to the government and then the government can take all the decisions based on this data, right? How many testing kits do they need, right? And what will be the uh, hospital requirements, ventilators or whatever it is, right? Do we have to extend the lockdown? What do we need to do, etc. Everybody is talking about a uh, second lockdown, second wave, whatever it is, right? But all the decision making comes from this prediction from a data analyst. Clear? And if I can do the data for uh, the whole country, definitely I can do it state wise, I can do it district wise, etc. Right. So if you look at it currently, Kerala, states like Kerala, Chhattisgarh, etc., are doubling much, much faster. It means that they are bad, they're performing badly, right? Take states like Tamil Nadu, Bihar, etc., are in fact uh, uh, in a better state compared to the national average as such. Right. So same way you can also see flattening the curve, right? When I wanted to visually present it, remember this, right? All these things I would have easily presented in some Excel sheets, but it will be very difficult for you to understand and read the data from an Excel sheet, right? So 34 states, each state's daily numbers, etc. It's very difficult for you to understand from the Excel sheet, right? So when I'm presenting it in a nice attractive chart, it looks really attractive. But it also looks very easy for you to read the data, right? Read my analysis as such. So that is what we call it as data visualization and data visualization is also very, very important as well. All right. Okay, guys, uh, any questions so far? I'm no, sir. No, sir. All right. Uh, is it how do they ask any questions, ma'am? Is that is there something that will be coming on the chat box or somewhere? Yes, sir. There's a chat box actually uh, towards your right side. Third option chat, you can open and see that. All right, okay. So, as of so now, there is no uh, chats that is there, right? No, sir. Yes, sir. Not All right. Okay. So if any questions you have, please uh, put it out on the chat box, guys. I'm happy to take it as well. Uh, Chinmay Sai has asked, what kind of software used uh, for this? I, I will anyway co uh, come to that point uh, about uh, the software as well. Right? What are the tools, basically, that we are using for all these uh, analysis? All right. So uh, let me quickly walk you through AI. So what do we call it as AI, right? Everywhere you will be talking about artificial intelligence, AI, etc. 
once again to put it in a very very layman's term or a definition ai is nothing but if a system or a machine can replicate a human intelligence right as simple as that right if a system or a machine can replicate any human intelligence we are going to call that system as an ai system which is artificial intelligence system right don't worry about it i will tell you both right what are human intelligence and what is the system which is replicating it i'll give you an example you will understand it better right so what is human intelligence we are talking about there are multiple human intelligences there right i will just give you some examples to you talk about it, right interpreting data for decisions human intelligence right communicating with people human intelligence identifying patterns in data correct right? human intelligence adapting to new situation this is also a human intelligence right talk about it six months back uh, say, uh 10 months back right uh you are entering into a lift and if somebody is coming with a mask on their face you will be little terrified right you will be little worried why is this person coming with a mask inside correct but today 10 months later it is exactly the opposite you are in a lift and if somebody is coming without a mask you are terrified right why is this guy not wearing a mask right so look at this right so we are completely adapted to the new situation and that is because we are human beings and we have this human intelligence right so these are all some of the human intelligence so what do we call it as artificial intelligence then right so if a machine or a system can replicate can mimic any one of these human intelligence right then we are going to call that system or machine as artificial intelligence system let me explain to you with an example, right? Talk, you would have heard about something called Alexa, right? Amazon's echo speaker, or you have Siri in your iPhone, you have OK Google in your Android, etc. Right? So what do they do? You ask a question to Alexa. Hey Alexa, what's the temperature in Chicago? Right? Your voice commands getting converted to binary command. It gets processed in the server, Amazon server, and then you get a voice output. And the response is, hey, the current temperature in Chicago is 6 degree Fahrenheit. Now, what is exactly Alexa is doing here? Right? If you look at it, uh, actually, Alexa is communicating with people. Agree? You ask the question. That's what communication is, right? You ask a question. I'm going to reply. That's what we call it as communication, right? So you ask the question. Alexa is communicating with you. So communicating with people is a human intelligence. We all know right and who's performing this amazon speaker is performing that is why we call the system as an ai system that's why you call alexa as ai assistant your siri or your okay google we call it as an ai assistant right why are we calling it because it is replicating a human intelligence basically which is that communicating with human beings correct so you are clear now what is an ai why are we calling it as an ai system etc any questions right so now uh if you talk about ai right ai is having many branches to it right so machine learning is one branch to it uh today in fact we're talking we're to talk about machine learning uh probably i may not have enough time to talk about deep learning but at least let me cover it up with some case studies with machine learning uh we have na natural language processing expert systems computer vision, speech recognition, planning and robotics. So all these are branches of AI. Okay. So whenever we talk about artificial intelligence, it comprises of all these systems. There. Okay. So now we are going to talk about machine learning. So what is machine learning and deep learning? Right. You all know what is AI. So I'm not going to repeat it. What is machine learning? If a machine learns from data and performs a task, we are going to call that as a machine learning system. Remember this machine learning is a subset or a branch of AI, right? You can see this here, right? Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. Machine learning is nothing but if a machine learns from the data and performs a task, we are going to call that as a machine learning system. Okay. So what is deep learning then? Deep learning, as you see from the figure, it is a subset of machine learning. Okay, it is another branch of a machine learning, right? So it also learns from the data and performs the task. No doubt about it, right? It also does the same job, but 
it uses deep neural networks this is a keyword right so you will be learning it going forward at some of the lectures but just remember this this is a difference right between machine learning and deep learning the difference is deep learning uses something called deep neural networks to learn okay so they also learn from the data and perform a task you will understand when i am explaining to you with some case studies it will be easy for you to understand okay so let us talk about machine learning every one of you must be using applications like ola and uber i don't have to tell you right so everybody uses let's talk about ola so when you talk about ola uh, you are giving a pickup location that is an input drop location and car selection right so basically you give three input data to your ola applications every time you book a cab correct and what is ola application does it takes all these three inputs and it gives you price as the output right the cab is not the output basically the price is the first output right so then you decide whether you want to take the cab or not etc that we will come to it later so you have three inputs and you get one output now let me put it in a simple question right let's take like this uh, your pickup location is your home your drop location is your college and your car is let's take micro okay so let the question just listen to the question carefully like right? now let's assume that every day morning you are doing this every day you are opening up your ola app to go to college you are giving this input data pick up location is your home drop location is your college and car is micro my question is will the price be same or different can some of you give answers on the chat box will the price be same or different students please respond them okay so some of you are saying same some of you are saying different okay there's a mixed take response that's coming in right so basically my question i hope you understand right so every day you are giving pick up location is your home drop location is your college and your price uh, car is micro right there is good amount of answers uh, both you have same as well as different is coming in good all right so basically guys the answer is that uh, it is going to be different now why is it different right because your ola application not just considers these three inputs right but it also learns from so many other data points what are the data points right look at this what is the traffic cab availability distance of the cab is it raining or not raining weekday or weekend peak or not peak or petrol diesel price so multiple other parameters so it collects all the information from all possible sources and then right so this is what we call learning from the data right i told you what is machine learning learns from the data right that's the first step second is performs a task so what is the task here is it analyzes all these data together right so it collects a lot of data and there is a data analysis done by the ola application the machine is nothing but ola app here right and then you get a price output after that so basically what is the ola application doing it learns from the data and performs a task basically it learns from the data and analyzing the data right so that is exactly what we call it as machine learning you're clear now that is why every time when you do the even when the same things are there right your home and college and micro still your output is different because on two given days two different days all of these parameters may not be same correct chances of that happening is very very less so even there is a uh, you know this again these algorithms are not transparent algorithms which you and me can access right these are hidden algorithms we do not know what are the parameters they are considering there is even a rumor that they might even consider your battery power right look at it sometimes if you try booking it from when your battery is 2% or 1% your charges might be higher why because ola application will know that you do not have a choice you need to book that cab 
right so there are multiple options which are there etc right so this is exactly what we call machine learning and somebody who creates this algorithm machine learning algorithm again machine learning algorithms are not going to fall from the sky right so there has to be some human being who has to create this so someone who create this is called as a data scientist you understand the difference now guys data analyst and data scientist both are different data analyst we saw in the beginning there is a data set there is a problem statement the job of the data analyst is to analyze the data for the problem statement right manually analyzing the data here the data scientist role in the industry is that you create data set you create the algorithm machine learning algorithm wherein the analysis or anything it could perform any task based on the learnings from the data clear right so this is the difference and somebody might even have a question what is data science right see data science is a very very generic term right now what is data science study of data right it's a very very generic term so anything that you do with data we call it as data science because it's study of data right so don't get confused about these terms these are uh, some of the commonly used terms used in the industry so let me give you uh, now the question is why machine learning is having such a huge demand in the industry right why everybody is talking about ai machine learning today look at this example right talk about google maps i have given two locations uh, uh, you know mumbai locations andheri and bandra now you can do that with your app as well right give that you know put velacheri to ananagar right you will have multiple options to travel one you talk about the first route right what is this this is the fastest route right this is the shortest route remember this there's a thumb rule right shortest routes are not always the fastest routes right because of traffic so this is the fastest route this is the shortest route but how is google maps able to tell me the time exactly trust me 99 percentage of the time this timing is accurate how is it possible right machine learning what is a machine here your google maps is the machine here right the machine learns from the past data or the data which is already there or live data lot of people currently on the drive between these two locations their android phones location services is on and they are passing on the information to google servers i am getting the traffic from that correct machine learning right i can give you multiple examples how many times you have seen this right i wanted to buy a, a bluetooth speaker in amazon i went and searched for jpl flip then i didn't buy it right okay i went through it the price was there then i saw that i closed it we do window shopping i went to facebook there is an ad for jpl flip i went to instagram there is an ad i opened up youtube there is an ad how is it possible right so this is what we call it as a recommendation algorithm right machine learning the machine learns at one side that what is what are you looking for right and it takes note of it and then it keeps giving you that option it's performing a task what is a task it keeps showing you that advertisements what you are looking for right you take whatsapp you talk to your friend about something right let's talk that you know you are saying hey uh, hey machan uh, there is one plus 80 now it's released uh, i'm planning to buy this phone right doesn't matter you close whatsapp next day morning you get up and you open up facebook there might be an advertisement from amazon saying that 1 plus 80 at so and so discount or whatever it is how is it happen right recommendation algorithm so these are all some advantages of machine learning algorithms right so if you just look at the applications which you are using on a daily basis right google search engine i don't even have to say you use it every day i use it at least 10 times a day right some time back i want when want to search for something called hydroxychloroquine went and searched in google search engine you know how many results i got i was stunned 4.3 crore results 4.3 crore results right if you take most of the times you see that right there will be 10 results in one page if that is the case there are 43 lakhs of pages pages i'm talking about results page right you tell me when was the last time you went to third or fourth page for a google search result i haven't gone for a very long time right i get my results on the very first page most of the time very very rarely i get it on the second page right but how many pages of results are there 43 lakhs pages so how is google able to give you the best results on the very first page even though there are 43 lakhs pages of results are there machine learning 
right? It consistently learns from the past data, delivers you the result for that, right? And talk about Gmail. There is a something called spam folder. Wherever a mail comes in, how is Gmail identifying this and splitting this into spam or into inbox folder? Classifier algorithm of supervised machine learning, right? It identifies the keywords. There might be a lot of keywords. There might be a sender ID which is marked as spam by somebody there. It knows, okay, if this sender ID is coming in, it is a spam mail, right? We talk about cash price, winning lottery of 10 million US dollars. Google knows this is a spam mail. Silently, it will put it in the spam box, right? Amazingly, it works amazing, right? And I can give you hundreds of examples like this, guys. I'm just giving you one final example. Talk about Netflix or your Amazon Prime, right? Or your YouTube videos. How are they suggesting videos and uh, uh, movies or series to you, right? They learn from what you are watching, correct? Your recommendation on YouTube videos and my recommendation will be totally different. So my YouTube knows what I like, what I'm watching, what I'm searching, what am I looking for, what will be my interest, right? How many times it has happened to you? You go and wanted to watch a five minutes video on YouTube. I've done it a lot of time. I will go to watch a five minutes video. I will end up spending around two hours watching so many other recommended videos, right? So because of recommendation algorithm, right? So this is what we call machine learning. Now think about it. You pull out your smartphones. Everybody I know, you know, you might be having a smartphone. Pull out your smartphone and list out the apps that you are using on a daily basis. And note it down. I can bet my head every single app, there is a machine learning algorithm integrated to it. How Facebook is showing advertisements to you. How Instagram is showing whom to follow. Right? Machine learning, Google Maps, YouTube, Gmail. You talk about anything, right? WhatsApp, you talk about... Uh, any application that your Amazon Flipkart, your Amazon page and my Amazon page will be totally different. Machine learning, right? Talk about YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hotstar, any streaming apps. Or you talk about your audio apps, Savan or Spotify or Ghana. Everybody is using machine learning today. Every single application, right? So that is the reason why there is such a huge demand for machine learning professionals in the market. Right, any application that's getting created today has AI or ML integrated to it. That is the reason why everybody is talking about ML, AI, etc. Every day, in fact, every second, everybody is talking about it. Right. So, any questions so far, guys? Before I go on to the tools part of it, any questions? Uh, let me look at the window. Uh, if any questions are interesting, definitely I'll take it up. Rohit has asked, there's no privacy. I mean, as you are giving access to it, right? If you do not want to give access to certain applications, you can definitely switch off the uh, options from your phones. Can you use ML to successfully differentiate between perfect and invalid bank transactions? Of course it happens, right? Uh, credit card fraud detection happens. Uh, uh, banking directions happens. Definitely, that's, it's all already there. Right, so uh, why does recommendation algorithm sounds like violating our privacy? I've already told you guys it's not violating. See, there are simple things, right? Now, if every one of you going to switch off your location service in Google Maps, right? Let's assume like that, right? Everybody in Chennai switches off the location service in Google Maps. What happens? You and me or nobody is going to get the uh, traffic data. So now you need to think about it, right? You know, everything comes at a cost, right? You cannot experience everything without doing something, giving back something, right? So definitely, but again, if you do not want to do that, you have a choice, it's on your hands, you can go to settings, you can switch it off always, right? Nobody is forcing you to do that, okay? Uh, Right, guys. So, uh, some questions. There are too many questions. Definitely, I do not have so much time to answer all of this. Put it in the feedback forms, guys. Uh, definitely, we will take up our when when we meet for our next session. We will uh, relaxly take the questions from you as well. 
Oke. Okay. Ethical hackers, uh, I, I, you know, again, I don't want to get into the hacking concepts now. Uh, what happens when we block all of our trackers in our browser? How much will these targeted services will be affected? Of course, there will be impact on the services, right? See, again, as I said, guys, you know, something which you might think as uh, negative is positive for someone, right? So, uh, so you cannot always think in one point of view, right? There is also always an another point of view which will help somebody to get it done as well. How Facebook shows exactly the person we know, uh, machine learning, right? Uh, there are multiple algorithms behind it, like very similar to Ola. Similarly, there are a lot of data parameters. Uh, data science only about math, stats, probability, or includes programming. I'll come to that in the tools section, definitely. Uh, these fields are hyped and trending. Do you think this field will become super saturated? I don't see that happening anytime soon. All right. Uh, definitely this will evolve. Uh, but because data is going to be there and it's going to be there uh, for a very long time, right? Because uh, everything happens using data today and that's going to be the norm in the future as well. But probably the tools might evolve. Probably my, the technology might evolve, right? Uh, I cannot say that this is what it will be same every time, right? So that will be evolving every now and then. But uh, is as a completely is the concept going to go off? I don't see that happening. All right. So just let me cover the tools, and if time permits, I'll take five minutes uh, questions on that. Okay. So what are the tools that is important when it comes to data? Again, as I said, right? Data science is nothing but study of data, and study of data has another name to it, which is called statistics. Right. So if you ask me what is statistics, same definition, right? You are going to study the data. So without statistics, there is nothing that can be done in data science. Trust me, every single concept is based on statistical formulas or models or concepts, right? So statistics is very, very important. And go back to the basics. If you're interested in data science, you need to be really, really good at statistics, right? And uh, going at I would suggest to uh, start with spreadsheets. Excel is an amazing tool where you can do a lot of analysis. Okay, uh, probably Excel is a challenge when it comes to huge amount of data. Uh, Excel is a challenge when it comes to a uh, complicated analytics, right? Which is which is very very rare at a student level. All right, so you can do a lot of analysis in Excel itself. So start working on Excel, and my advice would be to learn a uh, Cori language today. And MySQL is one of the common query language out there that is also helps because a lot of databases are stored in MySQL format. And when it comes to the analytics tools as such, R and Python plays a major role, right? So this is mandatory, right? If you are coming into data science, there is nothing that can happen without R and Python. So my suggestion is please learn both because 90% uh, of the industry requirements are covered by these two tools. Okay, and finally, when it comes to visualization, you have tools like Power BI and Tableau, and this you can definitely use uh, for visualization. 50 50, you can learn any one or you can learn both. Power BI is from Microsoft, uh, uh, you know, tool, and uh, Tableau is a Salesforce tool. So uh, both are equally good and both are equally important as well. Okay, so. Uh, so that's it from my end, guys. Overall, probably I'll take a couple of questions if it's interesting. Uh, I am beneficial for everybody. I will answer that. And there is a feedback form which we have shared on the sheet. Uh, please fill the feedback form so that we can quickly send you a e certificate for the participation. And uh, you will also be getting information about the uh, uh, webinar on uh, Data Science Club inauguration, which is going to happen on Monday morning. And uh, I welcome all of you. Please register for that and participate in that. It's going to be an amazing session. And particularly if you are somebody who's interested in sports and cricket, that you are going to learn a lot, right? Uh, so uh, there's Garo can provide a lot of insights about uh, with a lot of case studies in cricket as well. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yes, sir. But. Uh... Uh, yeah, one thing. Uh, we are uh, very glad to join that particular session, but uh, but by that time uh, we have our model exams as well as uh, first year students are also busy with another webinar. 
Uh, but anyway, let, let us check and uh, we'll let you know the participants' details. No issues, ma'am, definitely. Please encourage uh, everybody, in fact, uh, even from other departments, because anybody can attend that. And uh, also, uh, uh, as I said, like uh, any year students can also benefit from that as well, if at all others are free. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I trust you, like, uh, suppose if you have any other webinars like this, please uh, inform us a little bit earlier uh, so that uh, we will uh, make our students ready to attend that session. Definitely, ma'am. We will anyway share the activity plan. Uh, but this is, again, uh, there was some uh, uh, confusion because of Diwali and the IPL dates. Uh, you know, he was quite occupied with IPL, etc. So that's the reason it got until delayed. So, But definitely we will keep you posted on the future of things much earlier. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Kartikin, can EC students do this courses? I, I think anybody can do this, guys. See, analytics is data and analysis, right? So anybody can do this. There's no restriction that uh, it's specifically restricted to any one department or something, right? In fact, uh, we have a lot of students from BCom background uh, doing analysis as well, right? So uh, anybody can get into it. Uh, Chipai, the Ola app can be developed using general if statements. So what is the difference when it comes to MI? No, actually it cannot be, right? Because your data uh, situation changes uh, in a different way and uh, the machine has to learn and do the analysis, right? You can, it is very, very difficult to build a uh, Ola application like thing uh, with, uh, with a simple if statement. Okay, so ML is playing an important role, but of course, uh, there's a very detailed discussion we can have where it is. Uh, Akash is the best book. Uh, uh, again, I, I don't go for, uh, I'm a big time reader of books, but I don't read much of technical stuff in books, right? I, I learn practically, I learn from mentors uh, because that's easy for me as personally. So I honestly do not know uh, any books on AI and machine learning because I haven't touched a book so far on AI and machine learning particularly. I may not be the right person to answer that. Uh, okay, the feedback form is right there on the chat box. So uh, please take your time out and fill out the feedback form and uh, we will be able to share the certificates to you. And uh, just say like uh, there are, uh, yeah. So I've shared a slide in case if you are interested, some of you, some students might regularly ask me like, why don't you suggest some projects for us? Uh, so you can look at some of the uh, projects for student level to as a beginner level. Uh, so in case you guys are interested and wanted to do some projects on this, you can take any one of these topics and do it, right? I don't want to go and explain self-explanatory projects. Prasanna is the best website to learn these courses. Uh, I would, uh, you know, I can only recommend Imartica, so uh, professional commitment. Mm -hmm. Can first year students join data science? Yeah, of course uh, you can, there is no doubt about it. Uh, it's it you can learn right away from day one guys again as I said uh, you will be learning a lot of uh, basic programming to everything in this so there's no restrictions for anybody to uh, What are the algorithms used in AI? Again, AI is having multiple algorithms. Uh, okay, so I, I cannot list down everything. I was a couple of mentioning uh, algorithms I mentioned it, right? Like recommendation algorithm, classifier algorithms. 
So there's huge list of algorithms that is there and uh, which AI or ML is using in their systems, right? We can learn in our first year, yes, you can learn. Uh, can CSC students learn artificial intelligence? Definitely, yes, more relevant as well. All right. Okay. So, uh, thank you, guys. I'm uh, I'm sorry. Like, I'm I'm, uh, I'm really running short of time. Uh, I have commitment to another meeting, but uh, definitely uh, we will catch up sometime later, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer a lot of your queries as well in that time. So, really, really thank you for this opportunity and taking your time out. And uh, you have been amazing. That there's a lot of interaction that is happening around. It's good to see you all interacting so much and keep up the interest and uh, there will be a lot of more activities lined up from data science club and we will be able to uh, interact more through the club as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, sir. So, uh, I would take this opportunity to thank our college uh, for uh, providing me and uh, this opportunity of being the president of this data science club. So it gives me a pleasure to uh, propose this vote of thanks. It is a good initiative taken by our chairman, Mr. P. Shiram, sir, and the head, the head of industrial relations of our college, Dr. R. Bharimuli, sir, to bring this EIT data science club, uh, which will uh, give a lot of data scientists to the society from our club in the near future. Uh, that's for sure, right? Uh, now, I would like to thank our college chairman, Mr. P. Shiram, sir, uh, Mr. Ahmed Khalid, sir, uh, vice president and business head of uh, Imatikas Learning for uh, his great speech on uh, machine learning and deep learning, giving some insights on uh, data analytics also. It was wonderful, actually. Thank you, sir. So, I would also like to uh, thank our college principal, Dr. A. Ramesh, sir, uh, and also Dr. R. Barnley, sir. Uh, and finally, I would like to thank our college uh, department HODs and faculty members and non teaching staffs also. Uh, finally, I would like to thank uh, all of the future data scientists who attended this event and made this as a grand successful event. Thank you. Thank you.